Hi everyone, this is Abhinav from Phonebunch and today we are reviewing the Zenfone 2 Laser. Now this is the 5.5 inch variant with 2 gigs of RAM, 16 gigs of onboard storage. You have that laser autofocus at the back with the 13 megapixel camera, 5 megapixel front camera and it's powered by the Snapdragon 410 quad core processor. So let's go ahead and have a look at the build we'll talk about quite a lot including performance, battery life as we move along. So talking about the build, you can see that there's nothing on the right. Actually, the buttons have been moved to the back and top, just like the Zen Phone 2. The phone feels good to hold in the hand. You have your noise cancellation mic, power button, as well as the 3.5 audio jack at the top. Nothing on the left. And at the bottom, you have the primary microphone along with the micro USB data syncing and charging port. Coming to the back, you can see the laser autofocus sensor. You have a 13 megapixel rear camera, dual tone LED flash, and you can see that volume rocker right there as well. It is a bit flush with the back cover, but it's still easy to find and gives good tactile response. You can also see the speakerphone at the bottom. The rounded back actually makes the phone easier to hold, but this is a bulky device. It has a 3000 milliamp hour battery and weighs somewhere around 180 grams. The back mounted buttons do take a little bit of getting used to, the power button especially is quite atrocious, it's a bit spongy as well. But you do have double tap to wake and sleep which definitely softens the blow a bit. Now coming to the insides, you have a micro SD card slot, you have two separate SIM card slots, both of which support 4G connectivity and you have a 3000 mAh battery on the inside. Overall the build is very good on the device, it feels solid, there's no creaking or flex anywhere. Coming to the front, you have a 5 megapixel camera here proximity and light sensors along with the notification LD and the main earpiece. The notification LD is multicolor, so it will show different colors based on the amount of charge or different notifications that you get. Just below the display you have capacitive buttons which again don't light up, something we have seen with almost all Zenfone devices. Now even though this is a 5.5 inch panel with a 720p resolution, the pixel density is quite alright, 267 pixels per inch, it doesn't seem jagged, text also looks good, the touchscreen response is very good here, and you have Corning Gorilla Glass 4 protection, a first in this price segment. Color reproduction is also pretty decent, and you can also go ahead and play with the color profile of the display if you don't like the default one. Now if you come to network and call quality, we have 4G LTE support baked here and it does work out quite fine. We had no issues with network reception or call quality, both were pretty good. You have USB tethering, Wi-Fi hotspot as well as Bluetooth tethering, all work out quite fine. GPS also worked fine and there are a plethora of sensors on this device including the accelerometer, proximity sensor, light sensor, a gyroscope, magnetic field sensor and lots more. Coming to the camera, first of all, you should have a look at our detailed camera review if you just want a comparison with the Moto G3 as well. Overall, there are lots of modes available over here. The Auto Mode 2 performs well. The front facing camera is just about decent. It's not the best in this price segment. With natural light, images actually do turn out well. You can see that here too. They are in focus. That's actually one of the best points. Focusing is really fast. You can see the depth in various images. HDR mode also works fine. But this is still more of an average camera when you take into account all the different lighting situations. Now you might have already heard me saying that the speakerphone is really not that loud, it gets muffled quickly and well, again I would say the same thing, it is really not that loud. You do have an equalizer built in which definitely helps a bit but there's one more thing, you have an audio effects panel and I just set it to gaming mode. That increases the volume to quite an extent, it actually becomes audible, whether it's with your ringtones, music playback, FM radio or even video playback. FM radio is also supported over here, but you don't have the option to record FM. Now we are playing a 1080p video here, playback is again very smooth. Audio playback through the headphone jack is pretty decent as well. It's not the loudest, it's not close to the Moto G3, but still works out quite well. Now we are playing a YouTube video, again streaming video also works fine. Now coming to software, this phone is running Android 5.0.2 Lollipop right out of the box. So that's something really good. But there's a lot of bloatware installed on the device when you get it. You have Clean Master, Doctor Safety, some games, some quite a lot of apps actually. But thankfully you can go ahead and uninstall some of these or disable the rest. That definitely helps. Now ZenUI is one of my favorite skins on Android. It's very usable, there are a lot of nifty features, you have lots of customization including themes 
and actually there are plenty of themes that you can download from the default theme store. Talking of nifty features, you have a one-handed mode by just double tapping on the home button and you can easily use this phone with just one hand. You can type stuff as well, very useful stuff. You have all your quick toggles right up top, you have a RAM cleaner inbuilt there as well and you can edit these quick toggles, the fixed ones as well. So lots and lots of customization, whatever you want to do, you can completely make this device your own. You have your priority interruptions mode, you can separately control different volumes too. So there has been a lot of thought that has been given to the overall design of the OS or the OS skin for that matter. I've already shown you the screen on screen of gestures. You can also draw several characters to open up different apps. Multiple user accounts are also available. There is a snap view mode too. You can check those out in our Zenfone 2 review in more detail. Coming to storage, out of that 16 gig, you have 10 odd gigs available when you get the device. But app and app data both are movable to the external SD card. So there's plenty of storage available on the device and you won't run out of it. USB OTG furthermore is also supported. I am playing a 720p video right of the USB disk at present. Now we have already seen kids more than several other devices. Asus has also packed it on the Zenfone 2 laser. You can set a playtime and you can set a password without entering which you can't exit it. Web browsing is very smooth on the device and actually performance is very good on this device. You won't see any lag even while moving through different apps. Pinch to zoom also works out great as you can see here. And moreover with 2 gigs of RAM, multitasking is very good on this device. Garbage collection is not that aggressive. So even after opening so many apps and I go back to Chrome, you'll see that it's still kept in memory and does work out quite fine. Even in gaming, we saw that all the games that we tried did play quite well. There wasn't any major lag anywhere and some of the games we played in balanced mode as well. You can switch to performance mode to get more out of the smartphone. And the best part is this phone doesn't get heated up no matter how long you play games on this device. It does get a bit warm while using the camera but that's just about it. Now continuing with the different battery modes including performance, there is an auto start manager as well where you can choose which app start up as soon as your phone begins to boot up. You can actually disable apps that you don't want started when the phone is booting up. You can set various battery modes as well. Now I was able to get more than five and a half hours of screen on time with this one which is actually very good for a device in this price point and it's slightly better than the Moto G3 as well. And one more feature before I forget is glove mode which I really found quite useful with even the original Zenfone 5. You can go ahead and use the phone even with gloves on and you'll really really love this feature especially in winters in a city like Delhi. Uh, the one thing I notice is that pinch to zoom doesn't work but apart from that everything else did work out quite fine even with gloves on. Now many of you have been asking us which is better among the Zen Phone 2 Laser or the Moto G3. The Moto G3 again ekes out with its better build quality, smaller form factor, buttons on the side. I really don't like the button layout of the Asus Zen Phone 2. The top button again is quite a pain to use. And more than anything else, it's the form factor of the Moto G which really wins the case. The cameras are also better on the Moto G3 and performance is actually pretty similar on both. So my pick would still be the Moto G3. But at this price point, the Zenfone 2 Laser offers a lot lot more than any other smartphone in this price segment. Excellent performance, decent cameras, good build quality, great battery life, overall good design as well, a few color options which you can choose. So for now, given the rupees 10,000 price bracket, the Asus Zenfone 2 Laser 5.5 is our pick of the bunch. It's better than all the different smartphones which are available in this price segment, especially if you factor in usability, performance as well as build quality. We'll be back with more. Don't forget to hit that subscribe and like button. Thanks for watching the video. If you have any questions, hit us in the comment section. And as always, have a great day.